All right, so in the previous video, I designed this UI here from scratch in Squareline Studio. And I had promised you that um, I will export it to an Arduino, to actual hardware, and display the UI on a, on a screen, on a TFT screen. And since I made that UI, I changed a few things around because um, I noticed that my screen, it had a different resolution from what I had set in the in the presets here. So it is more oriented like this, but it's still 240 by 320. So the aspect ratio didn't change, it's just rotated. Um, but I went ahead and made all of these use uh, percentage values instead of fixed widths and positioning just to make it easier to um, adapt this here, this design here to um, other screen sizes and resolutions. And let's get to exporting the project out of Squareline Studio here. Um, okay, to get started, you need a UI. Um, you click on File and then view the project settings first. So and this is what I have, what I talked about. I just changed the display properties here. And if you go ahead and change this again, say to 800 by 600, if that were your display size, it's going to now appropriately resize these elements. But the first step when you export a project to Arduino is to actually make sure that this is all set correctly. So for my display, that's 240 by 320, 16 bit, 90 degree rotation, and no offset and rectangular shape then we want Arduino, right? We could choose other project types, but this is Arduino. And it's Arduino with TFT eSpy. It's the only thing anyway to select. Uh, the version doesn't really matter because we will update these in the studio. And when you first run this, uh, these export paths, they will not be populated. That was just because I had um, previously exported it once. So just leave these empty and hit apply changes once you're happy. This will resize this um, UI to, to give you a preview of what it will look like on the display. So you can then click export once you're done uh, to just go ahead and save it. Um, and what Squareline does is you can just export the UI files, but there is a template project that can generate for you. So you just click on create template project and it brings up a folder selection dialog. So you just go to your Arduino folder, wherever that may be, and you just select that folder and just the Arduino root. And what this does is it creates a new folder called Squareline Project. And within that, you find a new libraries folder and an Arduino project. And this effectively acts as a new project root. So Squareline Studio already includes the libraries you will need. In this case, it's LVGL and this TFT eSpy, as well as all the configuration files and your own UI files as source codes, right? As source code files. So this, this procedure just saves you the trouble of having to move these files into the Arduino libraries folder here. Um, but it means that you will have to set a new Arduino sketch root in the Arduino UI, which I will do in a second. But once you have created this template project, you can go ahead and export the UI files. I mean, they were there already, but you know, anyway, you can do that again. And whenever you change something in your UI, you don't have to export a new or create a new template project. You just have to hit this export UI files. And when you go back to the project settings now, you actually see that it puts in these, this path, uh, which for whatever reason on Windows is a little bit garbled, but that's, that's still, it still works. It doesn't matter. Then open up the Arduino IDE, which for whatever reason is extremely slow today. Mm. You can see that it does some indexing here but it's fine. Uh, the first thing you need to do is you just go to File, uh, Preferences, right? And here, and again, it already populated it, but it would be like this normally. 
right? So it's just your Arduino folder in the documents. But you click on Browse, and you just select the Squell and Project folder that Squell and Studio created, right? You select the one that has the libraries and the UI. So you just hit Choose. And it should look like this. So that's fine. We just click OK. And like I said, there are updates available for some of the libraries. In this case, for both, we're just going to hit install all and just wait until this finishes. But in the meantime, while this here does its thing, uh, make sure that you install um, your, board def your board files that you need. In this case, uh, I use a Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. Um, okay, I think the libraries are done. Uh, what you need to do next is you go to this folder that it created, or that Square Line Studio created for you. You click on the libraries. You open up the TFT eSpy library, and there is a configuration file that you need to change. Uh, it's this one. It's just called user setup, and it contains a bunch of commented outlines. So uh, these are just hardware specific definitions for optimizations. We don't need these in this case, but you know, they are here in the first section of this uh, user setup thing. And here you can change whether you actually want to use a parallel display, uh, either 8-bit or 16-bit. Uh, but in, in my case, I use an SPI display, so we just leave this commented out. Uh, the same here. This is specific to the RPI display or to Raspberry Pi displays. Uh, here you choose the driver, right? Um, how the Squella UI works is that it uses LVGL to draw widgets, which are your buttons and all the other elements that you placed in the UI. And it doesn't communicate directly with the display, but instead it uses this TFT eSpy library um, as a driver, as a glue uh, between LVGL and the hardware. And that's why you need to define which driver to use. But in, in my case, this this just works fine. It's exactly the chip that I have. So all the other ones, right, are for other display types. Are the same here and just a couple of other settings that I think they are very special. In most cases, you probably won't need to change them. Uh, you can display the height and the width, but it's only for specific drivers again. Same with color signals. Uh, you can invert the colors, but yeah, it's all irrelevant right now. Uh, the most important thing is section two, right? Where you need to define which pins you connected the display to on your Arduino or whatever development board you use. And you can see that this standard file has a couple of example configurations. And if you scroll down to about line 209, somewhere here, you should find a couple of that are couple of these that are not commented out but again it doesn't matter just make sure to change these appropriately according to whatever your hardware defines as pin names uh, fonts again you can comment these out if you find that the program is too large to fit into the uh, memory uh, but yeah just in, in case of the rp2040 it's not an issue and here again uh, RP2040 specific options, but uh, I found that it just works with the default settings, so I just kind of, you know, left it all as it was. And this is actually a sample configuration because what's important and what I didn't know, um, which caused me quite a bit of trouble when exporting the project, is that you need to, uh, when you use the, the Arduino embed package here for the boards manager, then you actually need to put in the physical pin numbers of the RP2040 and not the GPIO numbers like here. So in this case, um, the TFT's uh, MISO pin here, which is uh, D12, right? That corresponds to physical pin numbers, number four on the microcontroller. And uh, there is a lookup table and just saw, oh, actually it does have it here, GPIO 4, so you just have to use these labels. Same with this, MOSI connects to 7, which is the next one. Uh, the clock is pin 13, 
and for these other pins you may choose whichever you want right but i just chose 5 20 and 21 which are these three pins because they're just convenient nice to have them there at a frequency i just left these at the standard the default values here and the driver again is this ili 9341 so just hit save make sure to save it um make sure you select the correct board and also it's plugged in right so that's better um also make sure that the screen width and screen height is correct which should have been set by square line uh, other than that for now just just to get the uh the ui to show up on the screen you shouldn't need anything else so you just hit verify and compilation might take a while depending on how large your ui is in the meantime let me say that um the setup here actually mentions there's another library you can use for the rp2040 but that's specific to say the the raspberry pi pico or any other rp2040 based uh arduino compatibles but it's not that, that's not useful for um communicating with the um the arduino nano rp2040 connect right because that's that is a dedicated arduino board so it uses a different a different um core right? it uses this arduino uh, embed core which you can actually find if you look it up here mm, exactly this is the other one i also have it installed but that doesn't um work with the with the nano version of the rp2040 yeah so either way after a while <laughs> it should compile this you just hit upload uploading shouldn't take too long but yeah we will see how it looks and i will take you over to the screen in a second good so um this is the Raspberry Pi. Actually, it's not the Raspberry Pi, it's the Arduino RP2040. As you can see, I hooked it up to the screen here, just using simple jumper wires on a breadboard. And this is the output, and you can see that the buttons and all the other widgets, they show up on the screen just fine. But apparently something is wrong here, so it's just uh, rotated 90 degrees and let's see how we can fix that back at the computer let's see how we can fix the rotation issue if we just take a look at this code which is the ui project generated by squareline um, you can see that this does not contain any of the ui specific uh, stuff like the buttons or what screens you have those are all in this ui i mean they're not in here but they're in the libraries folder in the sources um, but anyway this is just a generic setup for uh, ETF uh, TFT eSpy and if you scroll down a bit you can see there should be uh, an orientation call somewhere let's see here we go tft.set rotation and it's free by default um, but I think in my case, I have to set it to two to be correct. So you might need to tweak this value here. Uh, again, I just uh, set it from three to two. And let's see whether that actually fixes it. So I just hit upload again. And I'll see you in a second. So and as you see, the upload just finished. And yeah, now it looks correct. The UI shows up as expected. Uh, I mean, the touch doesn't work at this point because I haven't connected any of the uh, That's unfortunate, but... Well, yeah, the, the connection's a little bit, you know, uh, iffy. But the touch doesn't work because I have not connected any of these pins up here. But, yeah, I think the video is getting a little bit too long again. So let's just cap it at this point. And yeah, for, mm. Anyway, that's, that's great. Great when it happens in a demo. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's how you export a UI from Squareline to an Arduino 
or an Arduino compatible board. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Have fun with your projects. Yeah, and let me know if you have any tips or tricks or something that you would like to share with us. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching.